Good afternoon, class. Uh, I'm back. I, I wanted to just take a little bit of time. I know uh, sometimes it's a special challenge, but uh, we started off with an objective at the beginning of class, and I was probably about 10 minutes short of being able to sort of complete that circle that we began, that circle of logic and that circle of history that we began in class. So I just wanted to take a little time to put the finishing or to, or to complete complete the circle of thought regarding uh, today's objective. And what our purpose was, uh, we're talking about the age of Pericles or the Athenian Empire, uh, widely regarded as sort of the high point of Greek history, the high point of Greek civilization. And as we learned in class today, it was a very short period of time. It, uh, you know, things were fantastic in Athens, but it was for a rather short period of time. In fact, you could think of it a little bit. Uh, it's possible that when historians look back at the history of the United States, they might think of that 60 or 70 year period from the end of World War II and to roughly now to the Great Recession. Possible. It's possible that that could be sort of the high point of uh, American civilization. I tend to be a little more optimistic than that, but uh, history is an interesting thing. It's always changing, and just because past generations experienced prosperity, opportunity, and greatness doesn't always mean that uh, later generations will experience that. But here we are. It's Greece. It's the mid-5th century BCE. We are becoming a little familiar with this guy known, known as Pericles. In class today, we started uh, by talking. Oh, interesting. Some of this stuff got shuffled around. Really interesting. Okay. But anyway, we, we started off by uh, talking about... Okay, this is going to really put me to the test. I'm not sure how these got scrambled, but we started off talking about the Persian War, the first Persian War from 499 to 79, and how that set the stage for the uh, ultimate emergence of Athens as a leading power on the Greek mainland. We talked about the formation of the Delian League almost immediately after the Persian War and how the formation of that league began for one purpose and that purpose slowly over the following decades was twisted and bent a little bit in favor of uh, serving the city-state of Athens among other uh, allied city-states. Uh, then, I don't know if I did it this way in this order, but I intended to do it in this order in class. We then looked at how Athens' foreign policy was shifting from first and foremost being uh, geared against the, per the Persians to becoming geared against uh, the Spartans. And so Athens is going to form alliances with its neighbors. These alliances are going to make Sparta increasingly uh, nervous and anxious. Uh, as those things uh, change, uh, we're going to start to see uh, the uh, formation uh, as, as Pericles shifts its foreign policy. Pericles is also going to sign a truce or a peace of sorts with Sparta. This gives Athens uh, a measure of peace and of course the Delian League is still making its contributions and increasingly Athens is taking the money that's being deposited in the treasury of the Delian League which has now been moved to Athens proper and now the Delian League treasury is helping to essentially fund a really high point of uh, Athens and its classical age. This is about as good as it gets. We'll talk more about this in a moment. And Pericles while Athens is experiencing its prosperity, Pericles takes this time to introduce reforms that make Athens truly uh, democratic. And uh, this is going to, in some ways, further contribute to the strength of the empire and the accomplishments that Athens is able to uh, realize uh, during its classical age. So. A little brief uh, roundup there, and now you hopefully have a clear sense of what our objective is. And now I'm going to just address a couple issues that we uh, didn't quite get to uh, in class. So the Athenian age or the classical age is a time of, as I mentioned, tremendous accomplishment. It's generally speaking funded by the Delian League, 
Athens had a accomplished economy, but for sure the supplemental income that Athens is taking from its, you could even describe it as a sort of bully relationship to its fellow Delian League members. Uh, peacetime coupled with the funds flowing in serves Athens really well. This is a time, as you can tell here, incredible accomplishments culturally. It's the height, Greek tragedies and comedies, the playwrights like uh, Aeschylus, Sophocles, Euripides, and Aristophanes uh, are all going to be linked to this uh, very uh, accomplished, I should say, very productive time in the arts. Architecture, as I mentioned, the Acropolis will be rebuilt. Uh, important buildings, sculptures, fixtures uh, of uh, Athens' public life. The Agora, that public gathering space, will be refurbished. The assembly area just off of the Acropolis will be uh, uh, essentially refinished and take on its uh, sort of glorious uh, character. This is where Pericles will address um, most of his uh, fellow Athenian citizens. Uh, and then finally, this is also the time of Greek philosophy. And we're going to be talking more about Socrates and to a lesser degree Plato and Aristotle uh, tomorrow in class. You'll be reading uh, about Plato, or I should say you'll be reading Socrates uh, in Plato's Republic, the excerpt from Plato's Republic uh, for tomorrow. So this is the height, this is the time of uh, Greek strength, I should say Athenian strength, and it is soon to uh, go away. Okay, The second Peloponnesian War. So as Athens is experiencing this tremendous success, uh, its cultural flowering, uh, its economic strength, uh, it's also trading quite a bit. Its merchant marine is strong, continues to have its strong navy, uh, which has only taken small, um, small sacrifices in places like uh, Egypt and other uh, small skirmishes, naval battles throughout the uh, Aegean and Mediterranean Sea. But Sparta is nervous, and rightfully so, because Athens' strength appears to be occurring at Sparta's expense. So Sparta revisits the peace, that 30-year peace uh, treaty that uh, Pericles had signed in the mid-5th century BCE. And as Sparta does this, it places Athens and Sparta increasingly on a military a path toward military conflict. This will bring us to the Second Peloponnesian War. Uh, which lasts from roughly 431 BCE to 404 BCE. Sadly for Athens, Pericles is going to die in the second year of the Second Peloponnesian War. He dies of plague, which was a real source of uh, problem throughout Greece, but particularly for Athens. The two different options, uh, or the two different military strategies, on display during the Second Peloponnesian War was, of course, Sparta's land strategy. They focused on uh, infantry, uh, and Athens, as had always been its strength, its naval capability. The Spartans thought they could put a blockade, they could surround Athens and essentially starve it. Athens made the gamble that they could, because of their wealth and the tribute that they had been receiving from other uh, neighboring partners in the Delian League, that they had the luxury of waiting things out. Uh, the plague was definitely um, a bad thing for Athens and it complicated its um, plan for waiting out the Spartan siege. Ultimately what's going to happen is late in the Second Peloponnesian War the uh, Athenians are going to uh, engage in something of a military gamble. Alcibiades is the uh, Greek, or I should say, Athenian politician who is credited or discredited with this plan. And he sends um, part of the Athenian navy all the way over to Sicily so that the southern tip, you can think of Sicily as the, um, uh, as the boot that the Italian peninsula, um, I'm sorry, it's the ball that the Italian peninsula 
boot kicks. And anyway, this turns out to be a disaster. Uh, the Athenian navy is handily defeated at Syracuse, and this begins sort of a downward spiral for Athens. It's weakened, it's lost, it's economic clout, it's military clout. Finally, Athens is going to surrender to Sparta in 404 BCE. And you would think that would be really good news for Sparta, but as we'll see, we'll talk about this in class on Monday, uh, actually this is going to be the beginning of a shift in Greek power. And we're going to start to see the Macedonians from the north, people like Alexander the Great, Philip of Macedon, are going to take over and take Greece in a much different direction. So Sparta is victorious in the Second Peloponnesian War, but sadly that victory isn't going to do much for, um, of course it's not going to do much for Athens, but it doesn't wind up doing that much for Sparta either. So with that, hopefully we can see sort of the sources of uh, Athens' power during the age of Pericles and also a basic understanding of how it all came undone. Thank you and I'll see you tomorrow.